Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the sophomore album from Pusha T titled King Push, Darkest Before Dawn, The Prelude. You know, I always get the feeling that I should be a much bigger fan of Pusha T than I am. Because when I reviewed his solo debut album, My Name Is My Name, back in 2013, I found myself really struggling to like it. And going back to it now, well, putting aside how uneven it feels as a whole, Pusha T always struck me as a strong, technically detailed MC that didn't take his coke hustling and gangsta image beyond just a wallow in darkness almost for its own sake. And while I definitely had the voice and the production to make something vividly compelling out of that, I kept looking for more of a payoff that never really materialized. And it's not like Pusha T had the game's pop sensibility or Freddie Gibbs' complicated framing or even the over-the-top gangsta iconography of Rick Ross or Jeezy. You could definitely argue that the methodical, very rational grime of Pusha T's best material simply operated as a mirror to the subject matter in the world around him. Nothing more, nothing less. But that's probably been the reason why I've always been a little bit underwhelmed by Pusha T's work over the past couple of years since Clips broke up. For such a talented rapper, you'd like to think he'd have more ambition, go for more than just that. And the funny thing thing is that Pusha T appears to have brought more ambition to the table in the lead up to his 2016 release King Push. So much so that he dropped an entire album's worth of material as a prelude, a short, brutally dark project released just before 2015 comes to a close as one of the better years for hip hop in recent memory. And while I remember not being all that enthused about My Name Is My Name a couple years back, after re-listening to it, I was interested in this album. After all, that album, that debut, had been stuck in development hell for years. And now that Pusha T had a firm hand on guiding his own career, probably helped by being a appointed president of good music, maybe this prelude would have some real impact for me. So how does Darkest Before Dawn, the prelude, turn out? Well, uh, better than I could have ever possibly expected. If this is considered the prelude to his album next year, I'm definitely intrigued what Pusha T is going to be bringing up, because this album is damn close to great. A dark-edged, ruthlessly methodical record that grows on me with every single listen. I was waiting for Pusha T to go deeper, and while you get the layered wordplay that you'd expect from him, he does do that here. With less of a compromised sound and something that does a far better job painting the picture of who Pusha T is beyond any stabs at commercial appeal, which he plainly doesn't need at this point. Now, a big part of this is Pusha T himself. And we're going to start with him and his bars because he is the centerpiece and main focus of this album. And wow, he definitely delivers in spades. Initially, I was primed to criticize some of his flows as being a little bit too reminiscent of Kanye's for comfort. But considering how often he avoids corny punchlines and instead brings together some impressively layered lyrics and vividly detailed bars describing his cocaine trafficking operation with vivid detail, well, it's actually believable far more than any of Rick Ross's hyperbole ever was. And positioned through some stellar wordplay with honestly too many great examples to highlight. Seriously, the album's pretty short. Might as well go through and dig through each song. There's so many different little unique spots one by one. But the first thing I notice as a whole is how Pusha T frames all of this. Because a fair chunk of this album is targeting the rap industry and the culture that perpetuates glorification of money pussy alcohol and how much of it is just really transparent and shallow. A veneer that you can see through when you have an established flow of cash the music industry doesn't always provide. Pusha T has an absolute disdain for rappers who play for the short game who would rather be more famous than Rich, but he also reserves a couple of bars criticizing the older titans of hip-hop who don't call them out on it. And while there's a part of me that kind of wishes Pusha T would actually name names on this album, he doesn't exactly have time for any of that hip-hop back and forth. I mean, he's got his coat trade that keeps him plenty busy, which at least gives him stability in a rap industry more focused on image than on the actual bottom line. And as usual, some of that comes through in a hyper-detailed brand of flexing that could easily be positioned as glorifying all that drug dealing, except that there's a lot of the subtext that seem to highlight how transitory and truly bleak it all is, and how much of it just feeds back into his own personal vices anyway. He takes time out on money pussy alcohol to salute girls who hook up with athletes who stay clean instead of gangsters who mistreat them and then dump them. And he's smart enough to draw focus to his own missteps on how he blew his money initially on keep dealing in the past, and had to keep going back to dealing coke to it for a steady source of income, which Beanie Siegel only further emphasizes in a great verse by highlighting how grotesque that dealing life can be. And thus, it could be a little bit awkward initially on Sunshine when Pusha he takes aim at police brutality, given that he'd easily be a target given some of his crimes, but he specifically highlights how he's not speaking for his own crimes, but for real victims. Not rappers all up in their feelings who are increasingly disconnected from the violence they rap about, which Push T makes no secret about, but underappreciated and undereducated innocents forced to do what they can to survive. He's using his position, ill-gotten through the dealing, but earned through his bars, to thus speak out and to support them, especially as important elements of black history have been marginalized, like the original plans for the Statue of Liberty, 
which is something I didn't even know about. That's another thing I found likable about Pusha T on this album. His goals for wealth and power feel bigger and more ambitious. His reference points aim higher, a little bit more cultured. Pablo Escobar for his criminal actions and Gil Scott Heron for his poetry. And more often than not, I buy it because Pusha T uses the references in a way that shows that he gets the context behind them. And it really comes together surprisingly well. Now it also helps matters that tracks like Sunshine are anchored in a great hook by Jill Scott. And for the most part, Pusha T really struck gold with his guest stars. The most notable is a sample from the notorious B.I.G. himself on Untouchable, a move that most rappers would never, ever dare to try. But you know what? It works in context, given how Pusha T was trying to transcend all the YouTube rappers to a higher echelon of success where he values himself. To the point where he takes the easy and well-deserved shot at Donald Trump. From there, while he does handle most of the hooks himself, the other guests he calls in do a damn good job. The biggest surprise being the dream on More Famous Than Rich, which highlights so many ignorant rappers only find religion when the gun is coming towards them. And then there's Kelani's hook on retribution. For as much as Busha T has his stability with his coke trade, he's all the more aware that if his money was gone, how many of the girls would actually stick around is a big question. And then Kalani confirms his suspicions and that they are completely correct, which at least feels honest if it gets pretty bleak. But at the same time, I was a little bit startled that Pusha T got ASAP Rocky and Kanye West on Money Pussy Alcohol and then pretty much leaves them on the hook and nothing else. Sure, it probably turned out for the best. Pusha T's a better rapper than both of them. But it did strike me as a little bit wasteful. You could just let the dream handle the entire song. It would have been fine. But really, that's a minor nitpick. So why isn't this album much better? Well, if I were to point to anything, it'd be some of the instrumentation. Not that it's bad, but it can feel a little bit inconsistent to me. Now, for the most part, it's exactly what you would expect from Pusha T. Thick, dark bass lines, sparse, rattling, minimalist percussion, and melodies that either come across from these echoing pianos or oiling, ebby waves of synth. And Pusha T is also smart enough to switch up beats for later verses in order to intensify that tension or darken the track. The best example is coming on More Famous Than Rich and Money Pussy Alcohol, or even off the gleaming borderline chiptune progression on Retribution that I actually quite liked. And there's a few subtle sampling choices I think work really well. The hint of an eagle's cry on Crutches Crosses Caskets, the dirtier drums on FIFA, the ebbing symphonic backing vocals on Untouchable, hell, all the backing vocals on this album. They do a fantastic job bringing that murky atmosphere of menace that has elements of opulence in the more prominent melodies but can still get plenty filthy and believable. But if I were to have an issue with some of the production, it would come in some of these latter cases. Most notably on Crutches Crosses Caskets and that odd plucking melody against the bubbling beat on Got Him Covered. The pro latter probably being my least favorite song on this album. They just feel a little bit too busy in the percussion that they really should. A little bit shallow there. And then there's that vocal sample that opens up the intro to the album. I like the message that it was saying, but it felt just a tad goofy to me, just with its tone. At least until the harsher rapped and spoken vocals began. Finally, and I'm honestly a little bit mixed on this, I'm not quite deciding how short this album can feel. On the one hand, this sort of bleakness works best in a lot smaller pieces, but it also means songs like FIFA could have developed a little bit further with just a little bit more time to them. And considering how much I like the instrumental there, especially with that guitar, that was a little bit of a letdown, at least for me. But you know what, overall, this was a pretty damn excellent album. Pusha T was not a rapper that I ever expected to really like, but this album brought forward the sort of straightforward, well-written, and honest insight that adds a lot of definition to his character. And as a prelude, it sets the expectations sky high. I'd be happy with this just as a regular album. For me, I'm thinking a light eight out of 10 and definitely a recommendation for sure. Especially considering it's a pretty quick listen, around a half hour, with a ton of replay value to decode all his lines. And trust me, you wanna do that because he's got a lot of gems here. So yeah, Pusha T, you got me on board. Let's see if King Push can live up to it. But honestly, I think it can. I'm excited. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. You'd like to like and subscribe and be more than grateful. Anything else I may be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. Till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time. Niggas ain't been to church in a minute, but it's funny how that take make a nigga get religious, amen. You